one thing I hear the most and the one thing I personally have, um, you know, really wake up and ask myself every day and, you know, I have a process, a, a really deep connection and a prayer process of like, you know, help me serve, um, guide me, you know, like I use me as a vessel, but there are, including myself, there's a lot of people out there who feel this sense of like, what more can I do? Like, I don't have the clout as Charles Eisenstein, so what good am I? Like, what can I do? And there is this sense of, like, wanting to contribute. You know, I do think it's inherently in our nature, as you say. It's like there's – it doesn't matter who, what your background is, your circumstances. It's it, There is this human nature that we are – you know, it's inherently in us wanting to help, wanting to make a change, wanting to contribute to beauty and live fully and alive. But what would you say to people, especially, like – Let's just say the common person, you know, here in the United States, as someone who's working, trying to survive, you know, going through the motions of life, raising kids, family, but they want to, they want to make a change. They want to contribute. You know, what, what's the one suggestion you have? And of yeah. course there's people feeling like I'm going to contribute by yelling at people on social media, <laughs> you know? Or... Okay. So first, first I would say this, I would, I would ask this feeling of wanting to do more, wanting to contribute more. Where is that coming from? How much of it is from a sense of worthlessness, of never enough, nothing I do is ever enough, I'm not good enough. Um, how much of it is wanting approval of the parent, the internalized parent, the socialized parent? And how much of it is actually coming from a sense that I am not doing what I am here to do? there's something else, something more. Well, that often gets translated through our inherited ideas of what makes a change in the world. And our inherited ideas say the bigger, the better. And how do you know it's big? You can measure it. So if I'm, if my essay or my words reach a million people instead of a thousand people, then I must be having a bigger effect, right? Well, not necessarily. And think <clears throat> of who that diminishes. It diminishes all of the um, nannies of this world who pour love into a child. And maybe that child goes on to, to do big things. And how often does the nanny get celebrated as much as the man out there doing big things? Like. Who are we actually venerating here? Who are we upholding? Who are we, we admiring? The ones who get left out are the ones who t have been getting left out by patriarchy for thousands of years. The nannies and the grannies, the daycare workers, the people who are doing, who are like holding families together, the people who are taking care of one little garden or an animal. Now the, the calculus of separation says they're not doing much to help. Not as much as, you know, Charles Eisenstein is doing with this big audience. Not that it's actually that big, but, but that is the logic that we have to reject because it contradicts the heart's logic that recognizes exactly what you're supposed to be doing. So, so that feeling of I could be contributing more, I should be contributing more, as I said, where's it coming from? It might be, have a lot behind it from many directions and the valid part of it really is saying is saying trust your heart because if you're not trusting your heart then you will have the feeling because that's the guidance that's the, the the orienting organ that helps us recognize what part ours is to play in the cosmic unfolding of life so if if you're not listening to your heart then you will have the feeling that I should be doing, I could be doing more, that I'm not doing what I'm here to do. It could even be that, that your mind says, well, I'm doing great things. I'm, I'm working for global change. And your heart says, spend more time with your children. <laughs> like personally, like for me, I mean, I think my work is, is having a good effect in the world. But I don't know that as deeply 
as I know that my parenting is having a good effect on the world. Like as far as like what time in my life was well spent, I think a lot of my time wiggling my fingers on my keyboard in front of my computer was well spent. I know a lot of it wasn't. I think a lot of it was, but I know that my time pouring love into my children was well spent when I was really attentive to them. And I regret the times where I wasn't fully present and attentive to them because I thought I should be doing something big and important in the world. I had it backward. So this big, bigger contribution, this more, let's be sure not to filter that through the lens of separation and to understand that bigger could be contained in a very, very intimate setting. It could be the biggest thing you do could be the time you spend with your with your with your father on his deathbed. Maybe that, and then maybe that's weeks and months, and you had to take out from all of the important things you're doing in your life to do that. But maybe that was the most important thing that you will ever do, as far as how it impacts the future in 500 years, how it changes the field that we recognize from our psychedelic experiences to be interconnected, that we recognize that, that anything that happens in one place happens everywhere. Like this is the truth. We have to sit in this truth. And when we do, then the heart and the mind will no longer be in conflict.